In the last few audios, I've been emphasizing the fundamental ethical violation that's going on with the medical mandates, how it's an act of abuse, it's a form of slavery. Worth also talking about is, of course, the very real increase in suffering that this has caused, particularly to children, which is the most disturbing part about it. So a lot of folks actually have been talking about how putting the masks on children in school and isolating them from one another, you know, putting them in these like squares or circles, you know, in the classroom and or, or even in these like uh, <clears throat> plexiglass cubes in the classroom um, is actually abusive, right? And you have to try and, first of all, whether you think it has medical merit or not, any rational person should recognize that this is probably going to be traumatic to the child, right? It's not normal for a child to be living that way, to be interacting with others that way, to be, you know, masked up and isolated and treated as though they are a danger to society, right? That their very breath, you know, is a, is a threat to humanity, and so they need to be uh, controlled like a prisoner in a prison, right? Like some maximum security type thing. That is traumatic, right? To Without a doubt, that is traumatic to many, if not all of these children. And that's an awful thing, right? Childhood trauma is a terrible thing, which has extremely you know, negative consequences, not only for that individual, for the rest of their life, you know, for, how long it, for however long it takes them to overcome that trauma, if they ever do. And that's just the psychological trauma. And then you factor in also the physical injury being um, executed, uh, by the mass themselves, right? Reduction of airflow, right? This has also caused great anxiety for children too. They they can't breathe properly, right? So they more likely to have like a panic attack and just uh, not be able to relax, right? Hypertension, whatever. There's all kinds of you know technical medical terms you could throw at the possible effects of, you know, a child who's forced to put the covering over their mouth and nose for the majority of their day. And then on top of that, we have the injuries caused by the actual injections themselves, right? Which mainstream media acts as if isn't happening at all. Like, a, you know, injury by pharmaceutical is a non-occurrence, right? It's just it's just sick deception, right? To, to act as though no child has ever been injured by pharmaceutical injections. Of course they have been. And of course they are being injured. And some of it is night and day, right? They're perfectly healthy. I mean, there's countless cases like that of vaccine injury where the child or infant is perfectly healthy. They take the vaccine or the third or fourth, fifth dose or whatever, and then, you know, 40, in less than 48 hours, they're showing severe negative health effects, right? So, you know, mainstream medicine and the, the state is, which, you know, of course, is working hand in hand with big pharma and doesn't want to accept any liability, act as though, oh, these are all just coincidences or, or whatever. Or, or the few that they do acknowledge, you know, get kind of brushed under the rug and never given the attention that they deserve. So the point I wanted to emphasize here is that this is just really sickening child abuse happening on a mass scale. And so whether the people at, up top are doing this just for a profit motive, right? Just basic, basic economics, right? You, you have a product that's been made mandatory. So, of course, these pharmaceutical companies are making 
tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars in you know the past year and a half alone. And then the politicians, of course, getting their share of that, it being this revolving door between the industry and the politicians. That's definitely a factor. <laughs> but the fact that, you know, when you look at someone like Joe, and you and you look at the way he acts around children, and you look at his just bizarre insistence on now injecting younger and younger children with these concoctions with no regard for the very real reality of injury. It seems to me like to call them possibly satanic is not is not that crazy of an idea. Like it is possible. Like are there any Satanists in the world? Yeah, probably. I think it's safe to say yes. And could you know what would a Satanist want to do? Like they they're they're totally demented. Like their their number one priority would be like, how can I abuse the most children in the world? Well, is it just coincidence that this whole fake pandemic and you know medical tyranny just so happens to be uh, an act of mass child abuse? You know, and it just so happens that it's being done by these shady people with the most power and wealth who have been known, you know, that that segment of the population have been known to be like a uh, place where uh, Satanists have operated, right? Like it's not, I admit this is a, you could say, conspiracy theory, but it's not really that out there. There are Satanists with immense power and wealth, what would they want to do if they had that immense power and wealth? Well, pretty much what what's going on right now, right? So it's just um, it's just really disturbing to see parents like just give their their children away um, to these to these people, right? And they may just be looking at their local school level, but of course there's a chain of command, right? The principal of that school is following basically right the orders of the governor and the governor's following the orders coming from the white house right it's all basically just a chain of obedience from top to bottom so if there are some satanic insane people at the top their orders are gonna work their way down all the way to your you know classroom teacher to your elementary school teacher who are then telling the kids that they have to put these coverings on their face and, you know, isolate themselves, stand in these squares or circles or, you know, go in these plexiglass cubes and get tested and, you know, repeatedly. And this is all traumatic and it's all, it's all really sick. And for parents to just um, go along with this because it's in the name of safety is, uh, is really bizarre like you there is there have been some parents that have been very vocal about rejecting this but but not enough a lot are just going along with it and they think well there's just this pandemic and we're just taking necessary precautions like again the fact that they're completely trusting these so-called experts and authorities to give the perfect treatment and prescribe the perfect device just com to tr trust them completely with that that's naive and a form of idol worship but then additionally to not consider that they might have ill intent like some of these people might actually be demented and actually enjoy seeing people suffer at least then if be open to the possibility that they're just doing it for more power and wealth you know how is that really such a crazy theory, right? And how can you just ignore all of the injuries occurring? You know, it's just, it's like Stockholm Syndrome, where you take the side of your abuser, and no matter how much harm they do, you just, you're blind to it. It's idolatry, right? It's literally idol worship.
turning a blind eye to abuse. I mean, the suicide rate has gone up very uh, significantly, right? I don't know if it's, I believe it's been breaking records. Right? People are going through immense psychological trauma with children and adults from all of these lockdowns and people think it's just some kind of like tough love like well this is what we got to do to slow the spread like that's again if you're thinking that way what you're not thinking about is the fact that you're completely trusting these politicians in the pharmaceutical industry to give the perfect solution like you're you're handing over your life and the lives of your children to these people complete trust right as if they're divine you wouldn't trust your neighbor or a stranger on the street to do these things you would call it abusive if a so-called regular person does it and but yet you think it's not abusive when they do it just because the mass media presents them as these you know prestigious experts and you just believe whatever they say about how much they care and you know, it's just naive idolatry that accepts abuse and it's resulting in a, a massive amount of suffering. If you think the issue is complicated, it's not. Medical mandates are a form of slavery. Slavery is evil and should always be rejected outright. Slavery is never a correct response to any crisis. It doesn't matter if it's a health crisis, if it's a natural disaster, a war. Slavery is never... A legitimate response to anything at any time anywhere if you could just get that if you could just stand in that truth then you wouldn't let them have their way with you and, and your children and make the world worse and worse actually and make it more and more of a totalitarian police state it's really not complicated but if you keep believing everything you see in the mass media, if you keep just letting yourself be intimidated and let yourself be distracted by red herrings where they're just going on about the numbers of reported cases, it's all irrelevant to the fundamental ethics that the mandates are abusive, the mandates are a form of slavery. Responding to an illness is one, you know, as far as what's the best medical choices to make or nutrition choices to make. That's one issue to be discussed and decided on by sovereign individuals who make their own choices, right? And it being mandated by politicians and farm, you know, and their pharmaceutical partners. That's the other issue. Like you should be able to discern the two and not keep thinking that the two must come together. Like you should be able to separate the two, I should say, and say, yeah, we can talk about the numbers and we can talk about vitamin C and all the rest of that and even vaccines or whatever treatments we can. That's one discussion. But before you can talk about that, you should get straight that the mandates are not acceptable because they're a form of slavery that just hands over your bodily autonomy and the bodily autonomy of your children to these so-called authorities and experts who possibly could be satanists actually <laughs> or at the very least just profit hungry unethical people regardless of who they are it, they're not worthy of being slave masters you know if you want to follow their guidance go ahead but the idea to accept that it can be a mandate for the entire population is ridiculous and it's just sick to see the abuse going on and the trauma occurring with all of these children. It's really horrible, actually.